Hey everybody, uh, today in this video we're going to be talking about how to measure things correctly and uh, up until now a lot of your science classes may have um, been more what's called qualitative where the types of things that you would be looking at or measuring would or uh, observing were qualitative observations. You're just looking at the qualities of the things uh, where you're just making observations based on your five senses. In chemistry and physics, it's really important that you're able to analyze your data correctly. And those types of data that you're going to be collecting are quantitative. They deal with the quantity of something, how many of something are there, or how much of it is there. And so it can either be a counting number or it can be a measurement of something. And because of the calculations we do and the analysis that we do with quantitative data, it's really important that you know how to measure things correctly, uh, what measuring tools work better than others for certain types of measurements, and that you therefore can make your correct analysis and come to a correct conclusion. All right, so first we're going to start off by looking at the concepts behind how to measure correctly, and then we'll look at a few examples. So before we move on to um, actually measuring, I'm gonna do what's hopefully a quick review about place values. So if you have a number and it has a decimal point, and I'm going to put blanks representing the three place values after the decimal point, and three blanks to represent the place values in front of the decimal point. So for this one, do you remember what the name of this place value is? That's right, it's the hundreds place. And this place value? Right again, tens place. And this one? Yep, the ones place. And then these? Tenths, hundreds, and? That's right, the thousandths place. So the concept that we're going to look at in some more vocab terms is that every measurement is really a combination of at least one known digit, one estimated digit, and possibly some placeholding zeros. Now I was careful when I said this and when I wrote it that it is one estimated digit and only one. We'll see what that means when we look at some examples. We'll start off with one that's easy. Some water that's in a 100 milliliter beaker. So this is one of our 100 milliliter beakers. You should have one in your lab drawer and we're going to sketch it and then draw in a level of water into that sketch. Now on this beaker we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. And the longer lines are labeled 20, 40, 60, and 80. And so we can tell that these marks in between, though it's not listed, this mark would be for 70 milliliters, this mark would be for 50, and this mark would be for 30. There is no mark for 10 milliliters on here. So at this point, I'm going to draw in a liquid level. And 
And now to look at what I mean by a known digit or an estimated digit, I'm going to draw lines that represent these place values again. We'll start with the biggest place value, the hundreds place. Now I think we can look at this and we can all agree that the hundreds place is zero. It's not even to 100 milliliters. The tens place is what we'll look at next. And this line represents 40 milliliters. This line represents 50. The water level is between them. And so we know that it has to be in the 40s. The value for tens has to be four. The ones place is what we're going to look at next. And we're going to decide where is it between 40 and 50. We're going to estimate where it is. Now some people might estimate that it's a little bit lower or a little bit higher and that's all right. That's why it's an estimate. Now again, in the statement above, we're only allowed to have one estimated digit. And so these would not even go into this reported out measurement. We wouldn't have anything in the tenths, hundreds, or thousandths place. And so as long as you have a correct known digit and you have an estimated digit, then that would be a valid answer. So 43 milliliters, 45, 44, 46, 47, all of those would be valid and correct measurements for this. If someone tried to say 45.2 milliliters, this is not a valid measurement for this tool because it tries to give more detail than this beaker would let us get. Another relatively easy example we'll look at is a thermometer. So on this thermometer, you can see that in the room right now it is right around 22 or 23 degrees Celsius. I'm going to draw this for clarity. So on the thermometer it had a line that was labeled as 20 and a line that was labeled 30. In between the two, it had a longer line. And in between here and 20, there were four small lines. And in between here and 30, there were four small lines. And the level of the red colored alcohol in the thermometer was to here. Again, I'm going to draw out blanks to represent the place values. And in this one, <clears throat> for the hundreds place, we definitely know that it is less than 100 degrees in the room right now. We definitely know that for the tens place, because the alcohol is between the 20 and 30, that it definitely is in the 20s. If we look and count, each one of these small marks should be representing one degree Celsius. And so this would be 21, 22, 23. We can see that the level of the alcohol is between the 22 and the 23 marks. So that has to be a known digit. It has to be a two. The next place value, the tenths, we're trying to estimate between the two and the three where this level is. 
And so this is going to be our estimated digit. Whether you estimate that it's a seven, an eight, or a nine, all are valid. And so a valid answer for this would be 22.9 degrees Celsius, 22.8 degrees Celsius, 22.7 degrees Celsius. And if somebody were estimating that they actually thought it was right on this line, they could have estimated 23.0 degrees Celsius. What would have been incorrect would be saying something like 23 degrees Celsius because that does not provide enough detail. This thermometer can provide more detail than this. If someone had tried to say 22.95 degrees Celsius, that is not a valid measurement for this because that is too much detail than this measuring instrument can provide. Now for those, those were relatively easy examples. We're gonna look at some more difficult ones right now. Now, the trickier examples are tricky because the lines that are on these measuring tools don't represent one at a specific place value. We're going to look at this 250 milliliter beaker here. We're going to sketch it and draw a water level in it. And on this beaker, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight marks. With each of the longer marks being on this side of the line, going 50, 100, 150, and 200. On the other side, there are markings as well. Those would be used if you had filled it up to the zero mark and you're measuring how much you pour out. We typically don't use them. And so we'll stick with these measurements. I'm gonna put out our place values again. And I'm going to draw in a level of liquid. So we'll look at the hundreds first. And we can see the liquid level is between 100 and 200 milliliters. And so at the hundreds place, it has to be a one. So that is a known digit. The tens place now, we're looking at this and we know that the level is between 100 and 150. And it looks like it's right on that line. So we're trying to decide, is it gonna be a two or a three here? This is where people get confused, is that even though it looks like it's on the line right for the midpoint between these two, and they think that it should be then 125 milliliters, is that really at this point, this is what we're estimating. It's estimated because there are no lines that represent one at this place value. So there are no lines that represent uh, 10 milliliters between here and here, and so this is an estimated digit. And if we look carefully at the beaker, we also see an interesting piece of information, is that this plus or minus 5%. And so what that means is that these markings, there's some uncertainty in them anyway. And though 5% doesn't seem like that much, 5% of 200 milliliters would be 10 milliliters. And so people might think that it's right on this line and think that we should put 125 milliliters, but really when you understand that it could be plus or minus 10 from that, we do understand that it could be maybe just 120 milliliters or it could be 130 milliliters. So that's why it's estimated. Now we can't just say that it's 12 milliliters, we do need to do something and so we have to put in not another estimated digit, but a placeholder, a zero as a placeholder. And so when we would write this measurement out, we would have to write 100 
20 milliliters. I did not put the decimal point because if there's a place holding zero in a measurement, you don't put a decimal point. So if someone did write 120 and then a point milliliters for this measurement, that would be marked incorrect. Because what it tells you, having a decimal point there tells you that the zero was estimated and the one and the two were both known, which was not the case. This piece of lab equipment did not give us that amount of detail. And this was just not the case. Remember, we had to estimate the two, and so the zero was a placeholder. It was not an estimated digit. We'll look at one last example. Again, it's tricky. This is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and I'm going to draw it for clarity. Now on this graduated cylinder, there are long marks, and one of them is labeled a six. And the next long mark that is labeled is eight. Now there's a medium length mark directly in between those two. And then between this medium length mark and the eight, there are four small marks. Likewise, there are four small marks between here and here. I'm going to draw in a liquid level Now I think at this point, people know that they need to be measuring from the bottom of the curve called the meniscus. And so that's not really what makes this part challenging. It's that each of these little tick marks, if you count them and you think about it, each one of these spaces is worth not one tenth of a milliliter, but they're each worth two tenths. So this one would be 7.2, 7.4, 7.6, 7.8. So we'll look at our place values to decide what is known and what's estimated. Definitely not up to the tens place yet, so that has to be a zero. Now we can see that the meniscus is definitely between the seven milliliter and eight milliliter mark. So for the ones place, it is definitely a seven. The tenths place, this is where it gets tricky. Each of these marks is not worth one tenth. And so that means this will be our estimated digit. So we need to think, is it closer to the zero mark for the seven? Is it closer to right in between where it would be 7.1 or is it closer to 7.2? All of those would be valid measurements in this case. One that would not be valid would be 7.3 because it is definitely not over the 0.2 mark. Another one that would not be valid would be if somebody wanted to go with that is not valid because, again, it gives too much detail. So, uh, thanks for watching. Those were the concepts with a couple of examples about how to measure things correctly. Next, you're going to be looking at lots and lots of examples of measurements taken correctly, and then you'll come into class to practice those skills on your own. Bye.